YouTube. Welcome back to the channel. As you can see, I got something a little different here. I got my boy with me. You know what I'm saying? This is somebody I've known for a long time. Go ahead and introduce yourself, my boy. Appreciate that family. YouTube, what's up? It's your boy Anthony. Y'all can call me Ant. Um, we out here, bro. We chilling. We getting it in. If y'all want to follow your boy, follow me on IG, RizKid84. The content is sneakers and clothes, man. So y'all get with your boy. Riz Kid 84 this this the type of dude right here man I'm telling you my boy be fresh from head to toe all the time he wake up clean it's crazy you know, I'm just trying to keep up you know what I'm saying just trying to keep up you know what I'm saying so what's up dude man welcome to Cali my boy welcome to Cali my boy how, it, how you feeling bro feeling good man you feeling good weather's good hey bro Cali's good bro how we met bro I met this man 11 years ago, bro. How we met, bro? <sighs> getting fit, bro. Getting fit. Met getting fit. Health is wealth. Don't forget that. Um, but yeah, we met through health and wellness, bro. That's how you do. Yeah, man. I met Organic, this dude in the gym, bro. Me? Met him in the gym, bro. Hey, bro. So I got a question for you, man. Look. Let's pop it. If dogs can talk, what breed can't say nigga? <laughs> <laughs> Bro, if dogs can talk, what dog breed can't say nigga, bro? Golden Retriever. <laughs> That's the only right answer, right? <laughs> golden Retrievers, bro. Yo, what, they what? born and live in the suburbs. Name the last Golden Retriever that you've seen in the hood, bro. If you name any Golden Retriever in the hood, bro, I'll go buy one right now. Hey, bro, what was Lassie? What was Lassie? Oh, uh... Was Lassie Golden Retriever Not, a, not a St. Bernard. Uh, not a chow. Bro, what is Lassie? Lassie want to go to retriever? Let me no, look that bro, up. No, Lassie was quick. not a golden retriever. Lassie was a collie. A collie. Lassie was a rough collie. That's the whitest. That's that's the that that's the breed that you picking. I'm gonna agree with you because that hair too straight. Too straight. Bro. That hair too straight to say, nigga. Too straight. Too straight. That hair too straight. Hey, what breed can definitely say, nigga? Though. Pitbull. Rottweiler. Rottweiler. Pitbull. Doberman. And you know we're going to let the Chihuahua say it because the Mexicans is the homies. What's, <laughs> <laughs> what's, what's the mixed breed that can say it? Mixed breed that can say it? What's like, a, what's, like a, what's like a breed that you see a lot that you feel could say it that could go either way? A Labradoodle. <laughs> <laughs> they hear nappy. They got nappy hair, bro. Yeah. Bro, Labradoodle is wild, bro. Yeah, a Labradoodle. Let's go with it. Labradoodle is wild. Let's Ger go Labradoodle. Ger German Shepherds, I don't know if they can say it because they're the feds. Nah, they can't. Yeah, German Shepherds can't nah. say it, man. No, no, no. German Shepherds can't say Germans it. Germans can't say it. But uh, Childs can definitely say it. I'm going to let a child slide. I let a child child got to say it, bro. I'm going to let a child slide. You got to let the child child say it. Hey, my dog, what's going, what's going on with Diddy, bro? What's going on with Diddy, man? It's we know he a booty bandit. It's time running out, bro. It's running out, bro. It's time running out quick, too. And I heard Charlemagne the other day. Charlemagne was talking, bro, and he said, he said, it hurts. Like, he disappointed. How you feel about that? You disappointed? It, do, it does hurt, bro. It hurt? Because he said, basically, all our icons begin, they take themselves down in the end. So, here's how I look at that situation, bro. Diddy to me, I see the music that he made through other people. So... Right, because it's not thinking, like he was an artist. Right, he, would, he, he was, was. Was he producing or something? Dancing? I still don't know who did it. I don't know what, what he, he does do. to this day. We just know he rich. I just know he rich, and he got rich off of other artists. So for me, I'm kind of disappointed. Well, I'm not disappointed. It's disappointing to know the person behind all the artists that I like growing up ended up where he is. But at the same time, he's not making new music. He's not. He ain't putting any artists out really in, what, 15 years that actually matter that actually matter so it's like it really me. don't affect it us. doesn't affect me at this point it don't but it hurts me to know that the guy that changed the era of music for me is now you know what i'm saying going through what he's going through but he he made his bed bro he's gonna have to lay in it and they raided his crib i don't even know what's going on. i don't think anybody knows what's going on they raided his crib he don't know what's going on he don't know what's going on people talking about he fled to antigua but apparently that was capped he ain't, he ain't, he didn't he didn't go to Antigua. He didn't go at all. He was in Miami. So, but the jet went to Antigua. Diddy might be in Antigua right now. 
He got a Diddy double. <laughs> he, got, he got a clone. He got a double Diddy. Diddy and Antigua right now. I thought he was in Miami this whole time. He double Diddy. <laughs> <laughs> He double diddy. Oh, man. All yeah, I know. He the wool over all eyes, bro. Diddy the booty Bennett. And what's crazy is back <laughs> in the day, bro, I used to hear, like, adults say, like, I'm talking about when I was a little kid, adults used to say, Diddy is gay. Like, adults. Like, adults that I grew up around. And I used to be like, Diddy's not gay. But they used to say, Diddy's gay. Usher's gay. They used to say half the R&B people was gay. And I'm like, no, they weren't. And now it's coming out that a lot of them were. It's slick facts, bro. It's facts. It's slick factual. It's facts. We about to get the docs. The proof is about to come out, though. Bro, did he gonna run to prison, bro? Here's the question, though. If the facts come out, are these people still getting supported? If they've been diddling with Diddy, like Meek Mill, is Meek still gonna be? What's gonna happen to Meek's career, bro? What's gonna happen to Usher's career? What's gonna happen to Justin Bieber's career? What's gonna happen to all these people that have had some kind of entanglement? Or whatever they want to call it with Diddy, are their careers over? Are we in a time where people going it's gonna blow over at some point and they're gonna still be able to continue to grow? Like how do we foresee this stuff happening? Let's say if something realistically comes out about these people, what are we doing? Well, you already know how the black community is. If it comes out that these people was getting their cheeks clapped up, it's over for them. People not gonna support. People not gonna support that. Like the right now. Will. They will. And that's a strong community, too. It is. That's a strong community. They will support them, but I think it'll be the... I still think it'll be the downfall for them. All of them. If it comes out that they was doing some... They was involved in it in some type of way like that, that's the downfall. I guess so, bro. I would say so, my boy. I guess so. Because I ain't gonna lie. I can't... I'm not gonna be able to support the same, bro. It's just gonna be... Like, bro, like... Y'all all been lying about what y'all into for years. Like, if Meek drops something hard, no Diddy. No Diddy. <laughs> no Diddy. If Meek drops something dope, bro, and you know, like, it comes out, like, they have been able to prove that he was in some type of sexual relationship with Diddy. Not saying that I think that's the case. I'm just saying if that happens and the song is cold, it's kind of going to be hard to vibe to it because I know, like, what really happened. You know what I'm saying? It's going to be hard. And, and I think it's, I think a lot of people going to be the same way. And I feel like DJs are not going to play it in they the can't. clubs. They're not going to play it in the clubs. The radio's not going to play it because people going to react to it in a certain way. So their career basically over if this come out. If it comes out. I feel like somehow, some way, Diddy going to get out of it, though. Bro, I'm so confused, man. Because I really don't know what this is about. I'd so have it's no hard clue. to say, like, what's about to go down because we don't have any clue of what's really happening. We don't bro. know what's going on. They raided his house with tanks and guns, bro, during the middle of the day. During the So they're not, the they not looking for, for splitting, splitting male cheek tapes with guns and tanks, bro. That, that never happens. So he's clearly involved something bigger. in something else. Something bigger. That he's gotten himself into. So a thug's getting taken away for RICO cases and they didn't pull that up for thug. Then why you gotta pull the tanks up and the guns for Diddy? Like what is he involved in? And they didn't they didn't bring him in for questioning. They ain't really did nothing with him, bro. So we just gonna have to wait. But them career is over though. Careers is over, bro. They over. Alright. So my dog. Let's talk about wisdom, bro. Wisdom. Let's talk about a little wisdom, family. Give me some wisdom. That you would give yourself at 15 right now. So if you were 15, if you can go back and talk to your 15-year-old self, what wisdom would you give him now? As this kind. Of. But if you can, give me three. Give me three things of wisdom you would give your younger self. I would tell my younger self to save 10% of every dollar you make. That's one thing I would do. Another thing I would do is uh, I would tell myself to invest early. And I remember when I was a kid, I wanted to invest, but I felt like I didn't have enough money to invest. But I wanted to. But if you think back now, back when we were like 15 years old, right? 15 years old. If I would have put $10 
and something like NVIDIA or Apple or Google or anything back then when I was 15, that $10 would be flipped crazy. If I would have put $10 in Netflix when it came out or Amazon, maybe not when Amazon came out because Amazon came out when we were a little bit older, but, well, no, actually, no, it didn't. Amazon was out in like 2000, bro. Amazon came it out just, 2000? It just wouldn't, it wasn't Amazon. It was Amazon, but not this state of Amazon. Let me see when you was able to invest in Amazon. Oh, invest? Maybe yeah. 2000. Amazon been around for a while, bro. It just, it just picked up. You was able to invest in Amazon. It came on the stock market in 1997, so I was definitely able to jump into that at 15. Yeah, I would tell it. myself to invest, bro, because even the little $10, I w- when I was 15, I was working. I was working at a little grocery store. Well, nah, that was 16. I would tell myself once I start making money, save 10% of every dollar that I make, save 10% of it. And I would also tell myself to start investing as soon as possible. It don't matter what it is. It don't matter if it's $10, if it's $100, because in the future, it's going to flip crazy. It's going to flip crazy. All right, if so I, if I, what else? If, you said what else? Mm-hmm. Always, always keep your composure. Always keep your composure. There's been times in my life where I flipped out, like, had like a little anger issues sometimes growing up. I feel like you respect it more if you can keep your composure. I would tell myself, always keep your composure. How about you? What you got to say about that? About the composure part or just the two, the two you gave? About all of what I gave. Man, being financially smart and financially wise, bro, is probably one of the biggest traps that young men and women don't, don't understand, bro. I had to learn the hard way as I got older, bro. Like, you, Tom, you allow time to basically make you feel like you got time, right? As a younger person, you feel, I got time. So if you don't have anybody there guiding you to let you know you really don't have time on your side, everything you need to do starts now for your, as, a, as an adult. So honestly, once you turn 13, 14, 15, you really should be thinking about something. Like, what do I want to do in high school? What college do I want to go to? What um, I want my major to be. What I want my major to be. What I want to be when I grow up. Because more than likely, you're going to change it. It's going to change. It'll change. But financially, that's one area that I think all young men and women at that age should probably be looking to more. And the school system should be teaching them that too. Because they don't, right? You know, right. You, you look at mock classes that people bring up all the time. and um, The ones you see is taxes. How to, how to calculate mortgages. Interest rates. Um you know, how to balance checkbooks. Like, nobody really does that anymore. But those are things that as young people we need to know. How to invest. What is the stock market? You know what I'm saying? What's the NASDAQ? Right. You know, what are, what are these things and what does that mean to me? You know, and specifically as people of color, bro, we don't, a lot of us don't learn that stuff until we get older. You know, we in our 20s trying to learn that stuff. Some people in their 30s. Some people have never touched it. So it'd be good. It's better to get a jump on it. So like you were saying, that 10 to $15, bro, you could put that in the Amazon if somebody taught you. Let's say they had a class in your high school, bro, where they taught you. And they're like, all right, everybody, if you can, we're going to bring in $10. We're going to invest in, in at the beginning of the year. Right. And then let's see what your investment did by the time we get out of right. class. Buy one stock. Just buy, buy one. one share. Just buy one share. That one share going to flip. Promise you. That's it. Big time, bro. So that's huge. Um Composure, bro, that's every human needs composure, dog. Even at even at our age, we need composure. Um, you know, things just trigger you. Yeah, I practice that a lot more now in my 30s than I did when I was in my 20s, trying to stay Man, composed. Because yeah. yeah. when I was in my 20s, I was not composed. It was times like when I started to realize, like, yo, you need to calm down. But a lot of my 20s, I was just like, like yep. yeah. Yep. It, it, don't don't get me wrong though. I knew the situation. I wasn't just like do, doing it at the drop of a hat for anything because then I would be dead by now. I knew the situation, but I'm telling you, like when it called for it, and I had the option to stay composed or flip, I would usually choose the latter. Yep. It uh it, it's difficult depending on the situation, dog. But composure is key. I do agree with that. That's a good look because you want to make sure you can stay calm in a lot of situations. The one thing you don't want, one thing you want to be able to do as you get older, bro, is be able to assess situation and use your discernment. 
Like, am I tripping? Is this person tripping? Right. Is it worth me tripping with this person? Right. Is it worth us tussling? Like, what's right, what's right, the outcome? Right. Can you think ahead and foreshadow what may come from you doing that kind of yeah. stuff? So, good call. Um, I'm gonna give you mine, dog. So for me, one would be um. I would tell my 15-year-old self, brother, to keep a tender heart. Keep a tender heart. Um, the world is cold, bro. The world is cold. The so world is cold. It is cold. It is cold-blooded. We were just talking about Diddy, bro. He was. People was loving Diddy back in the day when he had Biggie and Mary J. Blige and 112 and Mace and, and all them people, bro. Locks, the whole crew he had. Bro, don't nobody care about you no more, bro. <laughs> I forgot about all that. The world is either look <laughs> the world is either looking for, for, for you doing wrong so they can have something to talk about. Or if you're not doing wrong, then you lame. Or you hiding something. And as humans, a lot of people just like to look at the negatives. They won't we need negativity. We need negativity. Yeah. Negativity fuel people. It fuels, bro. It fuels so people. So having a tender heart suffocates that kind of stuff. You you know, you gotta keep a tender heart. Cause and in this world, bro, not a lot of people have that. So you got to learn how to kind of let the negativity, the toxicity, um, all the things that the world's going to throw at you, you can't allow that to, to shape who you are. You have to learn how to let other things shape you, the positive shape you, instead of letting the negative shape you. Because if you don't, you're going to fail. Um, the other thing would be don't blame people for what happens to you. Stop. Did you do that? Yeah. You did that when growing up? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you start blaming people, blaming your, your living conditions, blaming your parents, blaming the people that you dated, blaming other people for what happened to you instead of looking at it like... Looking at yourself, taking responsibility. Looking at yourself, taking, taking accountability. responsibility. Yep. Or looking at everything as just a learning tool and being thankful that it happened because that's just giving you battle scars, bro. It's giving you teachable moments to take with you so you can teach other people. Um, and you need those teachable moments. Without them, bro, you're going to still stay the same. Yep. Bro, you know how many adults... You're not going to grow. Can, how many of those we come across, bro, that you can just look at and you can say, bro, you childish. Yeah. And not like childish in a goofy, playful way, but they just childish people. The way they get mad about stuff, like short fuses, like the way they argue, they, they bicker about stuff. It's like, man, you can't let nothing go, bro, and just be the bigger person overall. So, you know, I want to teach my younger self that at an early age, for sure. That's it for the, that's it? That was three? That's two. You got one more. My last one would be, um, should have been my first one. But I'd just say, man, find God, bro, for my younger self. That's, that's, who I, that's who I rely on, bro. God, get to him and stay focused, bro. Don't, don't get off because if you don't, man, the world will tear you apart, bro. Really, mine is all about, man, just keeping my younger self just focused, bro. Just staying focused, keeping the blinders on, dog, and just I feel it. staying away from the negativity, bro. There's a lot around us, so. I feel it, bro. Hey, so uh, you know they got uh Tyson, Tyson and and uh and Jake Paul, <laughs> Tyson and Jake Paul fighting on Netflix. It's Netflix, right? Yeah. It's gonna be on Netflix. Man, who you got? So who, we got. Who you got, my boy? So we got. So check it. So we got the Rottweiler versus the Labrador. <laughs> you got the one that can't right? say the N word. Right. And one that can't. We got one that want to say the N-word really Real bad. bad. He want to say it. And then we got one who can say it whenever, bro. But the Rottweiler almost 60. You think that means something or what? He still got teeth. <laughs> <laughs> he still got teeth. He, he still, still bite, right? He still got teeth, bro. He still got a strong bite. He still got All a strong bite. All it takes is one bite. Still got a strong bite. All it takes so, is so, one so, bite. So, 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 so you, you, on record, you on record saying that uh, you think... You think Tyson got this? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I want, I ain't going to lie, I want Tyson to win badly. I want him to knock his ass out, bro. I do. But I just don't know because he's older. And Jake Paul do hit hard. He do hit hard. But I'm tired of Jake Paul, bro. I'm tired of him, bro. I'm so tired of him, bro. Why you tired of him? Though? I'm tired of him because he's getting all his <laughs> hype and he not fighting anybody. He not. He fighting like older people. He fighting people that retired. That's all he doing. He fighting retired people or he'll fight an MMA fighter who's not a boxer. You know what I'm saying? Like, 
fight an actual fighter. He fought an actual fighter and lost. What's the name? Uh, Tommy. Tommy yeah. Fury. Yeah. He fought Tommy and lost. That was the only... Well, I think he went down and he fought somebody in Puerto Rico a few weeks back. But it was a box I never Recent? heard of. Recent. He won? Yeah. Knockout. First round. He beat a Puerto Rico... Uh, actual boxer. Puerto they said Rico. it was an actual boxer. I never seen him before. He didn't look like an actual boxer. Yeah, but buddy fighting people in all types of weight classes, bro. Like, yeah, he not fighting people in his weight class. Right, you fighting somebody that's a featherweight, a welterweight. Bro, he like, don't deserve all this recognition he getting, but he make a lot of money doing it. And I think for him, for him, he wants us to respect him as a fighter, but he don't want to fight fighters. He wants money, and this is gonna get money. I still respect him as a fighter. I respect him as a fighter fighting us. I still respect him as a fighter, yeah. <laughs> fighting fighting, fighting us. civilians, yeah. I mean, I get it. I still respect him as a fighter, bro. Like, looking at where he came from to who he is now, Buddy can definitely fight. Like, I know he has hands. But now you're talking about, I feel like it would be like somebody learning how to play basketball and, and, and you playing, like, all the retired players that can't dunk and get up no more. Like, you playing 50, 60-year-old versions of themselves. So it's kind of like you can't really – You can't really gauge if they if you really better than them or not, because they out of their prime, bro. Like, yeah. what what can they do? You know what I'm saying? If, yeah. If he if he if he was somebody that, that got good at playing basketball and he was training in basketball, and all of a sudden he decided he want to play Dominique Wilkins. Dominique Wilkins is 60 years old, bro. Like, you probably should be able to blow past him just off of speed Easy. and age alone, right? Easy. Yep. But he still has the fundamentals that if he gets you to a certain spot. He could actually beat you right. if he if he if he don't have to give you the ball back. Right. So that's kind of how Mike gonna have to approach this. Like he gonna have to keep him in his spots because if he gives him an opening, bro, Jake gonna take it. I think if Mike hit him one good time, it's over. As soon as he hit him, I don't know if he taking no hit from Mike, but I also feel like if Jake hit Mike one good time, it's over. Just because Mike is an older man, bro. Mike is pushing sixty. How many rounds is this fight? Four, three. I don't know. Let me look that up. Cause I say if it's a if it's a four round match, five, five is a match, right? That they doing. I thought I saw something that said it's like super short. Like it's not a long. They're not gonna be in there for no eight to ten rounds. You know what I'm saying? If it's like I, I would I would if it was if I had to guess I'm gonna say five. But if it's five rounds, three three two minutes, three minute rounds. And I heard no refs. No referee? That's what I heard. Nah, they, bro, there's no way. Bro, that's what I heard. It could have been another fight that they were talking about, but it was, I heard somebody was having a fight with no refs, just like going there and, and it was, somebody else was just like, yo, that's not a fight, that's a brawl. But I don't know, bro. If it's, if it, if it's a short fight, Mike going to go in there heavy, hot. That's what I'm saying. Mike don't know how to play nice. That's what I'm saying, dog. If, if, it's, if it's a short fight, bro. Mike gonna go in there like I'm gonna just knock him out real quick. If it's a long fight, he might be like, "Let me test him out, see what he's doing." But Mike don't know how to like. You know how some people be like, "Yo, let's just spar." Mike don't know how to spar. Nah, there is no exhibition. There is no nah, exhibition. We, with we Mike. fighting, bro. Yeah, Mike trying to fade. Yeah, we we yeah we fight. He acting like you did something to his mama. Yeah, Jake Jake did, I guess. He probably did. He, he probably did. Like I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> he did. He probably did. All right, bro. So we've been talking about AI a lot lately. You know what I'm saying? AI is in the is in the forefront of technology. Um, is AI the next big technology that we're moving forward as a as a race, or do you foresee something else coming out that may be better, bigger, have a bigger impact on society and people as a whole? I think it's AI. I can't really see nothing. I can't see anything being bigger than AI right now. There's going to be something bigger, but I don't think it's in the, I don't think it's in our near future. I think AI is the near future. Well, AI is here, actually. AI is here. And I think the advancement of AI is the near future. And then maybe like 15, 20 years down the line, something bigger than AI is going to come. But right now, AI is, AI is major right now. They got, they got, <laughs> They got, they can make a picture, like a full picture of someone, like make it look real. And you have to really, really look at it to tell that it's AI and it's not actually a person. There was a photo I was looking at 
a couple months ago. I looked at this photo. It was I think it was somebody on, YouTube, on somebody's YouTube page, and then they showed the photo, and then they came back, and then they said they showed the photo for like five seconds. It was like a party or something. Looked lit. And then they came back, and it was just like. Nothing in that photo was real. That whole photo was AI generated. And I was like, what? Then he went back to it. And I'm really looking at it. And then after maybe like 10 seconds of looking at it, because I paused it, 10 seconds of looking at it, I'm like, okay, now I can kind of see here and I can kind of see there. I can kind of see there. But first glance, it looked so real, bro. Second glance, it looked real. But you got to really pay attention. The AI is taking over, bro. Look at our phones. Is it okay? But is it is it taking over for the good or for the bad? What will you see it leaning more? I think it's gonna be both. It's gonna be both. We got Chat GPT. People gonna stop. Like I know people right now. They get Chat GPT to reply to emails. Soon, if you stop thinking, if you stop using your 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 brain cells, you start to lose it. If you stop u- using your brain, you start to lose the capacity to use your brain. So you're not thinking, and it's slowly just making you dumber. You're just going to type in what you want the chat to be like, what you want the, the response to be like. I know a couple people that use chat GPT like that right now. So I know somebody used chat GPT in, in their master's program. <laughs> Granted, this is a really smart person. He's just busy and he's juggling a bunch of things. But he's using his master's program to write his papers. The school letting them use it? They don't know. Because, um, I don't know. You ever heard of Grammarly? You no. Know Grammarly is just a thing called Grammarly for college students. Um, and I think they recently just, like, added a new feature where it can block chat GPT. So I don't know if some schools are just getting on board. I'm pretty sure most of them did because of plagiarism. How can it block it? What you mean? The it, same way as if it's looking for plagiarism in a paper. So let's say if you're writing a paper and just plagiarize this this tool called um, Grammarly can check the the wording, the paragraphs, the papers, the journal the journal entries that you're pulling from, and it can see if this is plagiarized or not. So it'll know. And if it came from Chat GPT, it's technically plagiarized. Yeah. Let's say if somebody says, "Yo, write me a paper on the uh, the Civil War. Write me a paper on the Declaration of Independence. Write write me a paper on Martin Luther King's legacy." Chat GPT will write it out, but then now there's a feature that can that can catch Chat GPT. Mm. So it's it's a great benefit, but again, if it's put into the wrong hands, which most people at this point kind of use it, for the, wrong use it purposes, for the wrong purposes, specifically the younger the younger people, because you really need it for grade for school stuff, like mm. grade school stuff. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I think it's going. It's it's Jeff. I agree with you. It's it's a double. It's going to be equally good and bad. It's going to be equally good and bad. At some points, it's going to be really good. At some points, it's going to be really bad. But I think it's good to have it. We're just moving forward with technology. But every new piece of technology is is bad in some type of way. Like, for example, our phones. People be glued to their phones. People glued, sometimes, sometimes when people in the car, and I think everyone is guilty of it at some point, if you're not the driver, you're not even looking at your surroundings. You don't even know how you ended up where you're going. You, the whole time, just yep. staring at your phone. Like, sometimes, man, like, what I don't like is when I'm driving and, and I'm in a, I'm, I have someone in a new place, a place they've never been to before, and I want them to, like, take in the scenery. This is a place you've never been to. And they just, and I'm, and I'm like, everything you see in your phone, you've probably seen before or seen a form of it. You ain't never been here before. Like, look around. And I see it all the time. Driving, I got somebody with me, looking over at them. They just in their phone, like, not even looking up. They don't know what part of town we in. They don't know nothing. Until the car is parked, then they look up. Like, oh, we here. You know what I'm saying? It's like that. I think that's a bad thing for people to be so attached to their phones. Am I attached to my phone? Yes, but not to that extent. I'm not attached to that extent. But... All, I think all technology is, is good in some ways and bad in other ways. And I think it's going to be the same with, with AI. You think smartphone is a, is a, was more, what was more dangerous, the creation of the smartphone or the creation of AI? More dangerous? Which one was more dangerous to human development and um, can be used in a more sinister way? I think it's going to be AI. Because we got AI in the smartphone now. 
We got AI in the smartphone now. <laughs> it's on a virus. Yeah. <laughs> we got it's it's I think it's gonna be AI, bro. <laughs> they put they put a virus in the phone, bro. And AI not even finished. This is the beginning of AI. That's, that's the point. This is the very beginning that's why of I AI. Asked. That's why I asked, bro, because it's catching on quick and it's spreading really quickly. And it's it's already being used in ways that in my mind, like 15, 20 years ago, I thought of stuff like this. Like, yo, at what point are we gonna be able to like not have actual humans in movies? And they won't need actors and actresses anymore. Or a deceased actor or actress. They can put them in a movie. Or a musician. Now, they, if somebody wants rights to their estate and they give them up, now they can bring this person back to life. And Michael Jackson can start making another Thriller Thriller too. You know what I'm saying? like, Bruh, I'm glad you said that because the way I look at it is very similar. For example, Drake and Weekend... Had a song together last Fire. year. Fire, bro. Best song they ever put out. Fire. Best song they ever put out, bro. And it wasn't them. It nope. was AI. Best song they ever put out. That's crazy that you can tell whatever AI software you're using to make a song like Drake and Weekend, and it does it, and it sounds like Drake and Weekend. It's using the lyrics that Drake would use. It's using the type of lyrics, the sinister lyrics that Weekend would use. And... When I first heard it, I thought it was them. I had it on my playlist and everything. I think I found it like a week later that it wasn't them. It was AI generated. I deleted that thing so quick. We not going to need the artist anymore. So you deleted the song once you figured out it was, it was AI generated? Yeah. Took it off. Deleted it out on my playlist. Why? Because I'm not supporting that. I'm not supporting the... That, I think that can be the downfall of real artists. That can be the downfall of actual people who actually make music why do i need you if i can just clone you basically i can make you better i think that's that can be the downfall right there I ain't gonna lie i would have still kept it maybe not listen to it as often because it was fire because it was fire bro it you gotta fire. i would i would have still kept it i would have kept it if i downloaded it but i feel where you're coming from with not wanting to um not wanting to support it because then at that point like you said most of the time that stuff will be created by the i'm assuming the record labels at some point when they get their hands on it there's at some point they're gonna get their hands on it and they're gonna be like yo we gonna all right look at this look it. look at this scenario right here somebody goes to a record label they trying to get signed this person is fire they good and in another time period they would easily get signed they got a crazy voice all of that the record label or the producer hears this person and then they can just be like, I love this sound, but why pay this person when I can just use this sound, feed it to some AI software, and then have them sing lyrics like this person would sing it, use the type of lyrics that this person would use, or maybe not the same voice, but a similar voice, something that's a little different, and just make it even better better at this point it's just like now you fighting to try to get signed so you can get money Facts. and get your family out of any situation that they might be in you trying to come up and they just like you know what i don't even need you go try to go try to go independent and then next thing you know a year later you hear a song that don't sound like your song but it kind of has your voice a little bit it kind of has the style that you had a little bit that is not good for the actual artist so that's what I just took it off my phone. But I think some artists are gonna allow people gonna allow their labels to do that too. As they get older, they'll put something in their contracts that like, yo, once you like get sign to, over their rights. Yeah, I'm gonna sign my rights over. So once I turn 60, 70, 80, you can keep making albums. I just won't have to do nothing, but I'll get what seven percent, ten percent, five percent, whatever, whatever can come off the album, they'll get their piece of it, and they'll be okay with it. Cause that now they're not obligated to that whatever that that number of, of albums they got to put out from the new contract. They're like, fine, we'll just put you on a lifetime contract. We're going to put an album out every three years, every two years, or however long we feel like we need to. It may saturate the market for some people, and then for some people it may be good, bro. It's just kind of hard to tell where AI is going with that, though. Yeah. Yo. Yo, how you feel about that? Uh, first off, how you feel about that Kendrick diss? But Kendrick dissed uh, Drake and J. Cole. How you feel about that? No, first tell me whose side you on. If you had to pick a side, you with Kendrick and Future 
It's a civil war. It's basically a civil war, bro. Who you picking? Who you got? All right. So between Kendrick and Kendrick and Future, booming Metro, and then we got Drake, Cole against them three basically. Rick and Ross I, on Rick and Ross with. I was just about to say that it's so a lot Ross of people. It's Future a lot side. of people siding with Future. There's somebody else I'm missing too. It's a lot of people siding with Future. The game basically signed with Future. What Drake do, bro? Before we go, Drake, I don't know, bro. What do he do? Nobody knows. Nobody knows. I seen. Wasn't Drake shooting up Travis Scott? Uh, he was shooting up his. Oh, um, he threw some shots at, at the concert, didn't at he? At his concert, he dropped down a Travis Scott head, and then he said, "Bop, bop, bop, bop." So he beefing with with Travis too, bro. At when that this happened, people chose their sides. I don't know how he started beefing with Travis. Uh, so it's hard for me to pick a side. If I have to pick one, you have to. Pick if I have one. to pick one in this conversation. I'm going to go with Cole and Drake. Cole and Drake. But I don't know what... I know I know Kendrick's beef. I know Kendrick's beef with, with them is just more about like the... Who's on top. Now, the future Drake stuff, future Metro and Drake, I don't know what their issues are. That's true. If that's we true, just talk true, about the, the, the diss track, I'm on Cole's side. Because Cole is consistent. I don't really know why Kendrick coming out every so often just dropping disses, bro. Like, cause he lame. Air shots, bro. You just cause he shots. lame, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, he can come out every so often and just start talking shit and then go hide again. Now I'm not gonna say hide, <laughs> but he come out. He come out of yeah, nowhere, and start talking shit, he and does. then he just disappear again. Yeah, it's like, bro, just stay disappearing, bro. Like, he stay, ground, stay he gone. He the groundhog, bro. <laughs> He come out to tell us if it's if spring coming early or not, and then he go back, bro. You know that. You know that Homer Simpson meme. When he come out out the bushes, yeah, and then he faded that's Kendrick. Back into the he come out and he start talking shit, and then he just fade back in the bushes yeah. for like five years. Yeah, bro, stay stay hidden, bro. We don't need that shit. That shit is corny to me. Definitely, you just like taking shots at people who's doing something, and then you go back to hiding. If you want to be you, it sounds like he just want to be talked about. He just want to stir the pot and get talked about. If you want to be talked about, just make more music. You think at his level, bro, with what he has done, right? Because he's put out what four four albums and. Is it four? Four albums. Four albums. You think he really needs attention to the point where he just got to put a diss track out? Or do you think this is something... You think? Do you really think he cares? You think he just got in he was like, I'm just going to talk about it. I'm just going to mess around and just say it. Because we don't know what be happening in them sessions. But you think he actually was just like, I'm going to go in here on, on a mission to like... I think he just like beef. He just like... I think just, he just he like just, beef. He just petty. Yeah, I think he just like beef. Bro, that's like... People... Everybody respects it. Everybody respects it. I don't really respect it too much because I think that's like, I don't know, that's a little, that's like feminine to me, man. Like you just come out, you just start talking shit, and then you disappear. Why, like, why are you so angry at Drake? Didn't didn't when uh Kendrick came out, Drake took him on tour. When he first came. When out? he first came out, Drake took him on tour. Yeah, because they did that. What's the song with the Janet Jackson beat they did? Public, public uh. Poetic justice. Poetic justice. They did poetic justice, and you just start firing shots at, and you and I feel like Drake don't even be paying him no attention. But then Kendrick is like, "I'm forcing you to pay me attention because I'm the best in the world." Yeah, but they're looking at it from two different lenses. Drake's looking at it from a popularity standpoint. Kendrick's looking at it from a from a, a lyrical, a lyrical artist like from the type of artist that he is. And I don't think Drake cares, bro. Drake don't care. He's like, I'm not here for the <laughs> lyrical aspects of it. For yeah. me, popularity means who do people like. You know what I'm saying? How many, how many, like, how many number ones I got? That's the point, yeah. How many, how many number Grammys? ones I got? Now, Ken, Kendrick got some Grammys, though. He do. I don't really know about Grammys like that, though. I know he got some. I know Drake got some, too. So, I don't think Drake cares about that. Now, Cole is a different a different discussion because yeah. he does care about the lyrical He aspect. does care. And not only does he care, he told us he cared in 7-Minute Drill. How you feel about 7-Minute Drill, dude? Fire. That was fire, I bro. Liked it. I, and I, the crazy I, part is, I'm not even a Cole fan. And I loved that song. I love that song, and I love that album. This is unbiased. Unbiased opinion. Straight. Unbiased opinion. Unbiased, because I don't even like Cole like that. Because I don't like him either. But if Cole keep dropping albums like this, he got a new fan. I mean, unpopular opinion, I'm not a fan of either one of them. Oh. I'm not a Kendrick or a Cole fan. Facts. I'm not a Kendrick or a so, Cole fan unpopular either. unpopular opinion, Kendrick and, and Cole are not, are not my cup of tea. 
very unpopular and opinion. And it's not that I, that I think they're bad They probably rappers. about to roast the comments. Comments about to get flamed up. They about to get flamed up. It's unpopular, though. We called it. But I'm not a fan, bro. But I do like what they got going on. This little this little uh, mini, mini beef that's probably not going to go nowhere. Yeah, man. I'm not a fan of Kendrick. Don't get me wrong. Kendrick got some fire stuff. But it's just he's just not consistent enough for me. So it's hard for me to be a fan. Do he you? Co- he comes out very, very seldomly, and he drops something. And, it, and I'm like, yo, you went into hiding for, for three, four years, and this is what you came out with? I can only grab two of these songs and put it on my playlist. <laughs> Literally, that's all you can do. Sometimes I can't even do that. I think he just like controversy, man. He just like to, to beef with people. So when we get his next album? Now that he did this, he might come out with one. Next year. Now that he dropped, now that he started talking shit and J. Cole responded. Now, Kendrick is not the type to not respond. Kendrick is literally writing something right now. As we speak, it's probably going to, Cole dropped his on Friday morning. Kendrick going to drop something probably by Friday. Seven days. <laughs> Kendrick is, <laughs> Kendrick is going to respond, bro. Kendrick is a petty man. He's a petty man, and that's one thing. That is one thing I feel like men shouldn't be is petty, bro. That is one thing I try my hardest to never be as an adult male is petty. And he seems so petty, bro. Everybody love it, though, because it's the game. And people feel like this is, like I, heard, I was talking to some people the other day, they were like, this is hip-hop. This is what they should be doing. Why? Why we need to start talking shit about each other for no reason at all? this is hip-hop. Some some people I know, it was like this is hip hop, man. This is what this is what they should be doing. I like this. And it's like, yeah, we like the disses and we like when they go back and forth. But do you want to be the guy that just jumps out of nowhere and start talking about somebody for no reason? That's petty. That looks lame to me. That looks lame. lame. That looks lame. That's like five four five three energy. Well, I don't know how tall he is. I just know he's not. Kendrick. I don't know how. Yeah, I don't know how tall he is. Probably somewhere in there. Five, he five, <laughs> he said, five, three, and five, six energy. Yeah, it's he not said right. probably somewhere in there. But you know what's so crazy, bro? Petty is a petty is the new, the new age man is petty. Unfortunately, like I feel like we've gotten to a point, and that's one thing we should have told our fifteen year old selves. Don't be petty. Don't be petty, bro. Don't be petty. Don't get caught up in the noise, dog. The last thing you want to do is get caught up in noise and let other people affect you. So technically, I, I did kind of mention it with you know telling my younger self like stay focused, but. Yo, men are raising dudes to be petty. We seen the perfect example with Cat. Bruh, that was so petty. That's like Kendrick That was petty. so lame. Yeah. I ain't like that, bruh. Petty Pendergrass. Petty, petty Pendergrass down. <laughs> <laughs> petty Penny. Petty Pendergrass petty penny. down. Bruh. Bruh, that thing was crazy, man. That whole controversy with that shit, bruh. That was crazy. Yeah, Cat lost my respect on that, too. I know some of it was true, but he lost my respect on that. That's a petty individual right there. That's a female. So before we move, who who coming out on top on this beef? How's it going? Who I think gonna come out on top? I feel like Drake might not even say anything. Well, I'm kind of taking him out of it at this point because I think Cole kind of spoke for both of them. He said, "I got us." He said, "Don't worry about us, Drake. I got us." I'm not gonna take away from Drake because if he wanted to, he could. And I do think that this would have probably been fire, straight, bro. Yeah, Drake. Drake is good with that. It'll be straight. So, I'm on, granted, Future is, I love Future, bro. I love Future music. Granted, I haven't liked any of his stuff for the last couple years, but that last album he just dropped, We Don't Trust You, I like that album. I do like the album. But, his last couple before that, I ain't been rocking with at all. But with that being said, overall Future, throughout his time, I'm a future fan. With that being said, I'm on J. Cole and Drake's side on this one. <laughs> <laughs> bro, did all of that to tell me you on their side, I'm bro. on Drake and J. Bruh. Cole's side, bro. <laughs> I'm on their side, bro. Yo, that's wild. Stop it. I'm on, yo, you got, Stop the cap. yo, I'm not going against Drake because, I. yo, this might be another unpopular opinion because people like to talk shit about Drake in public and listen to him when they alone. <laughs> be a there's another, the there's yeah, another put unpopular. A, put on a little lingerie and yeah. put the Drake on in the room. <laughs> there's another the unpopular opinion. 
<laughs> I'm a big Drake fan, bro. Yeah. I love Drake. So I'm not going against Drake. I'm not going against Drake. And I like how J. Cole came out with that. So if you if you Kendrick Lamar and you jump on and you come at Drake for no reason that I can see, I'm on Drake's side every day of the week. Because we don't know if he did anything to him. Or we don't even did. know if he did anything. And to be honest, if he did, I wouldn't care, bro. I don't give a damn because he didn't do it I to me. I don't care, bro. I don't care. I don't care. Drake don't care about us. He I don't care about us. your beef. <laughs> I don't care about your beefs. Unless it was something like super crazy. <laughs> like Diddy on. <laughs> like diddling. Like diddling. Like getting his diddly, diddly on. Diddling in the dark. <laughs> 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 diddly in the dark. Diddly after dark. Dark diddly. Diddy after dark. Well, you, you remember BET? <laughs> yeah, they got Diddy after dark. Diddy Come after on dark. In the morning, yeah. <laughs> you, your mom busting the room. What you watching? You messing for the remote? You looking at Diddy. <laughs> diddy after dark. <laughs> <laughs> Turn that off. That's probably what he called it at his house. After yeah, that tw- is what he called it. After 12 p.m. is called Diddy after dark. That's what the parties be about. Diddy. Yeah, Diddy after dark. Yeah. That's why they raided his crib. They was mad they wasn't invited. It was all- <laughs> they took the set. <laughs> they took all the all the production equipment out. Wow, bro! Man, Diddy that's crazy, bro. All right, so check it. So we already on the topic. Let's just let's just let's just talk about it, bro. The goat conversation. It's being thrown around a lot. It's being thrown around a lot. Thrown around how? You mean like everything the word is has used loosely? Everything has a goat now. Right. Everything is goat. Or goaded. And or goat, goat started goat? with what? Sports, right? Yes. That started with sports. So it really greatest started. Of, greatest of all time. Greatest of all time. So it really started for me. I didn't really start hearing it until after Michael Jordan retired, right? And technically it was only one goat. I'm like, yo, this, he's the greatest of all time. He's now people didn't time. abbreviate it and call it the greatest, the goat. They were still saying he's the greatest of all time. Right. He's the greatest of all time. They said that about uh, Muhammad Ali. Muhammad Ali. Greatest it was only time. a couple. Yeah. And then, you know, it kind of bled into to hip-hop from right. when we were younger, and it was only two, Biggie and Pop. Right. And even when they were live, we were already having that conversation of who was the best then. Then Jay-Z kind of snuck in the picture. Right. Then Lil Wayne kind of snuck in the picture. Then Eminem was in the mix with that. Some people be, some people say uh, Andre 3000. We'll put, we'll put stacks in there. So we'll put 3000 in there. So now we got goaded there. But then we got football goats. Basketball goats. Basketball, new basketball goats. Other music area goats. Everything is a goat. Restaurants, what's to go to restaurants? What's to go to uh, uh, this or that? How you feel about the term goat, bro? Is it is it being overused? Are we The term goat is overused because it? it literally means greatest of all time. It's not. Greatest of all time can only be one. We... When, when we talk about GOAT now, and like, for example, when they talk about hip-hop, when they talk about rap music, they say greatest of all time. You have six greatest of all times. When you talk about basketball, somebody's saying, oh, he's the GOAT. They don't say greatest of all time. They just say GOAT now. And then they just saying GOAT. So it's like, oh, like say Curry dropped something from uh, half court. Oh, he's the GOAT. But do you literally mean he's the GOAT? Or are you just saying he's the GOAT because you like the term GOAT? And I think right now... GOAT turned into more of a slang term, and it doesn't really mean greatest of all time anymore. It just means that was good. That was great. That was amazing. He's the GOAT. Oh, now I heard, I heard something even to even go past GOAT. I heard GOATED. GOATING. You heard GOATED. GOATED, E-D. I have. I heard GOATED. Past tense. Oh, he's GOATED. How we have, who's GOATED? <laughs> So what does the past tense mean? Like they 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 Eston Stone they Eston Stone they they on Mount Rushmore or whatever it is like oh they're goaded they're in there. What does it mean? When I hear goaded, bro, let me tell you how I hear goaded. They might refer to their friends. Oh, he's goaded. They're not even talking about in any particular. Any particular thing like he did something crazy like oh he goaded. Oh 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 oh. It's changing, bro. It's changing. Oh. Can we use goat in every in every single situation? Does everything does everything need a goat? No, because how you gonna measure the greatest of all time and all these different things? That's my question. Because we're using it, so how are we measuring it? Because it's all subjective. It's, it's all, all subjective. Opinion. It's all opinionated. The only area that I feel like you can still use the term, and I hate to say it, is with 
the ba- with basketball, bro, with Michael Jordan, because I think there was a clear. And for the LeBron fans out there, fire the comments up. I know they're gonna get fired up about LeBron, but I feel like that's the only area you can really say, "Oh, this was the greatest player," and you can narrow it down to only a few people where it's just like, "Okay, you won't have so many crazy." options for who they think the goat is because at this point it's really narrowed down to michael jordan lebron kareem and you may hear some people say kobe every so often you may hear older people say magic maybe tim duncan but for the most part you're gonna hear them the top three are gonna be them people that's not that's goaded that are considered the goat yeah so i feel like you can do it in 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 basketball but when it comes to like hip-hop and music how are you supposed to gauge it how you supposed to gauge it? I would say they gauge. Well, when it comes to music, people gauge it off their opinion. But what they should gauge it off of is what type of numbers are these songs doing? What type of numbers are your albums doing? How many times you've been number one? How many times you had a number one song or a hit song? How many times have you? Uh, how many times have you had a number one album? How many times have you had a number one hit song? How many times have you had something that was number one? Or you was top five for this many weeks in a row. That should be what they measured it off of. But it's really just measured off of opinion. For example, everybody talks shit about Drake. Right? Everybody talking shit about Drake. Drake has so many number ones. Technically, he is like the GOAT. Or if not the GOAT, then right there in the conversation. But it, everybody talks bad about him. So it's like it's more opinion than than facts, more opinion than stats. So is should the go conversation just be based on like a like you can't take a vote? We've seen people take votes like on little little surveys or like little goat little vote vote naps. Like they were like, who's the goat? Who's the go to basketball? Nah, it shouldn't be on that because uh, numbers speak louder than than them words do. Because people gonna vote for who they like, but. It proves who you like when you listen. This song is streaming way more than another song. Like, Unfortunately, we had some unexpected technical difficulties. We lost sound and did not realize it. So you're not going to be able to hear the end of the conversation. But still, do me a favor and go ahead and subscribe to my boy's IG channel or IG page, RizKid84. And please come back again. Leave comments down there. I appreciate all you who watched and made it this far in the video. Peace.